So it's being recorded now. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Apyode and um, I have been working on uh, improving the performance of the role strategy plugin uh, for my GSOC um, project. Um, I'll now, I'll now start, uh, show you a small presentation um, about it. Uh, I'm just sharing my screen. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll discuss about three things today, um, um, corresponding to the three phases of GSOC. Um, uh, the first, we'll discuss about the micro benchmarking frameworks and running micro uh, and GMH benchmarks uh, in Jenkins, uh, both for plugins and now even for the core. Um, then we'll talk about uh, the performance improvements to role strategy plugin, and um, then we'll finally discuss about the new folder authorization plugin. So um, there were a lot of reported performance issues um, in the role strategy plugin. So uh, this is where this uh, project starts from. Um, so what we did uh, in the first phase was to create um, a benchmarking framework for Jenkins, uh, which would um, enable uh, users and plugin developers to run JMH benchmarks. Um, all of these benchmarks, um, this framework is now available through the Jenkins test harness to everyone. Um, and we have several um, uh, uh, e methods for making it easy uh, to run. Uh, we have a Maven profile um, for running the benchmarks locally, and we have a build step in the uh, pipeline library for running it on uh, CI Jenkins IO. And uh, we can use configuration as code um, to configure the instance that is started for the benchmark. Uh, so this um, basically works um, from the Jenkins test harness. Um, and we, uh, we, and we have a profile in the plugin pump, uh, which both get inherited to the plugin. Um, uh, for example, uh, we had benchmarks in the role strategy plugins, which are uh, run as a part of the CI pipeline. And um, we started improving the performance from there. Um, these benchmarks uh, on the CI Jenkins IO instance are run using the uh, run benchmark step uh, that was added um, to the pipeline library. And um, we have added uh, the ability to use a uh, configuration as code to set up the instances that is set, uh, that is started for the benchmarks. Uh, now um, we'll discuss about the improvements to role strategy plugin. Um, so the first, we made a couple of imp uh, major improvements. Uh, the first one was to avoid matching regular expressions again and again. So uh, role strategy plugin before version 2.11, uh, it used to match all regular expressions uh, that were there for the given role type um, for every permission checking request uh, that it got. Uh, so to improve the performance, we now cache uh, the collection of roles that match a given regular expression. And uh, we take care of the invalidation of the cache, which gets invalidated whenever a new role is added or modified. So this has given us um, a lot of improvement in the performance. And uh, the benchmarks uh, which were created using the benchmarking framework show uh, improve, shows improvements of about 3,300%. Um, uh, the other change we made was to cache implying permissions. So um, the, gen the permission model that's used by Jenkins uh, follows a tree-like structure. So one permission can imply the other. Um, for example, there's the administrator permission, which implicitly gives uh, the user the permission to read any job. Uh, so role strategy plugin used to calculate um, all of these implying permissions every time it was uh, asked to perform a permission check. And what we do now to improve the, uh, the speed of the permission checks is we cache uh, the uh, set of permissions which are implied by any given permissions. Uh, this happens when the class is loaded, um, or for Jenkins, when the plugin is loaded. Um, so this does not waste any time at runtime. Now, like I said, we uh, measured the performance improvements using uh, the benchmark framework, and they were visualized using JMH Visualizer. Now, the, uh, after all of these changes, we were able to have a performance improvements of about 10,000% in uh, our cases, um, uh, in our test cases. 
these were some uh, synthetic benchmarks and some of them were um, user provided benchmarks so we covered them all here um, and for to to make it even better, we created uh, the brand new folder authorization plugin. Uh, the plugin has just released um, last week and is now available to everyone through the uh, plugin uh, through the uh, plugin update center. And um, this frees us from uh, the backward compatibility of role strategy uh, plugin. Um, and just like it, this also supports global roles, uh, folder roles, which um, are like uh, project roles from role strategy and agent roles for configuring permissions to agents. Um, global roles um, are just like role strategy plugins, global roles, and they become applicable everywhere in Jenkins. Uh, now, what we introduce here is folder roles, which work on um, folders from the folders plugins. And um, the permissions to a folder plugin are inherited to all of the children. Um, agent rules, uh, agent roles, uh, next we have agent roles, which allow us to configure permissions for uh, multiple agents that are connected to Jenkins. And um, we have uh, REST APIs for adding in a, uh, for managing roles and with Swagger JSON support. Um, we also uh, support uh, Jenkins configuration as code out of the box. Um, so this is what um, a typical uh, configuration um, for uh, config uh, from configuration as code looks like, and um, this is the Swagger API. Um, this uh, this API is available uh, through uh, Swagger Hub, and uh, you can download um, stubs for uh, running these uh, API calls from uh, multiple languages. Now um, let's go for a quick demo of the folder authorization plugin. Um, So let's just first log in as the admin and let's go to uh, where we manage a role. Uh, now we can just add roles here. So let me just add the role here. And the role was added. You're not longer screen sharing. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, <laughs> muted and it took a while. Yeah, it looked like when you were switching to the demo, uh, you stopped screen sharing. Yeah, now it works. Oh. Yeah, so I'll show it again. Um, I'll add another role here. Um, and you can assign multiple permissions to the role. And the role gets added. Now you can assign any um, SIDs of the users uh, to the role. And the SID gets assigned. And you can see all the permissions uh, that this role gives us. Um, now um, let's just um, show how the folder roles work. So we have a couple of roles. Um, this um, is this uh, this is the configure the less important job role, uh, which uh, allows uh, user one to modify um, all jobs that are inside um, folder one and its child folder. And um, now uh, this provides all the permissions to modify a job. And we have another one uh, that allows the that allow user that allows user one and user two to uh, read the job. So let's just log in through to user one. Uh, now what we see here is um, there were actually three folders, but um, this user only has access to one of them. And now when we come here, uh, the when the user gets the read access to folder one, um, he or she automatically gets the access, uh, the read access to all its children. Now, um, let's see this important job and the user does not have any permissions here uh, but if you remember what we did um, uh, when we were uh, when i was showing the roles we have the less important job here and um, the user gets the permission to build and run the pro and delete the projects 
um, in the same in the same way um, for agent roles, uh, we've given user one the permissions to uh, delete agent one, but um, the user does not have the permissions for um, agent two. Right um, now, let's just switch on. Let's just switch to the Swagger Hub REST APIs. Uh, so this is uh, what the Swagger Hub API looks like. Uh, we have a YAML file here, and um, this uh, the this lists all the um, REST APIs that we have. Uh, so when you go to uh, when you want to look at a particular API, uh, you get the full uh, JSON schema that you need to. Um, that you need to send as a request, and um, you can uh, get some. You can get uh, the curl API. You can get uh, uh, the server APIs and in curl. Uh, uh, can I? Yeah. So you can generate the client SDK in multiple languages. Uh, Now um, let's just compare the performance um, of the folder authorization plugin with um, the Pro Strategy plugin 2.13, which contains uh, the performance improvements I earlier talked about. So uh, the global roles um, for a test case of about 500 roles uh, was uh, is about 934 times faster than uh, the roles in Role Strategy plugin uh, for checking a permission, and uh, the folder roles. Um, for an equivalent uh, regular expression-based um, configuration is about 15 times faster. Uh, you can see this GitHub pull request for our benchmark results. Now, uh, some of the challenges that I faced uh, was to have efficient permission checks. Uh, this took a lot of time, uh, and uh, my mentors really helped me here. Uh, so the global roles uh, permission checks now happen in a constant time, that is a big O of one. Uh, now, uh, the other thing was configuration as code support. So, um, the data bound configurator uh, in uh, the configuration as code plugin uh, did not support uh, import, not, did not support either import nor, nor export of sets. So, uh, there were a couple of pull requests there. And um, finally, um, uh, the thread safety and uh, safe serialization for the folder, authoriz uh, folder authorization plugin was another challenge. Um, so what we did was um, uh, make the authorization strategy object immutable. You can see the pull request for all of these changes. Um, and uh, finally, I'd like to thank um, my great mentors, Oleg, uh, Runje, and Supun. And um, please do share your feedback through um, either your, uh, through the Gitter chat or through the Jenkins developer mailing list. Um, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. So yeah, I'll stop the recording and yeah, we can uh, discuss a little bit later. But yeah, if you want, we will get this video posted. Okay. Thanks okay. to everybody who was watching this.